Can you do one full year of internship during your master's degree? Is that even advisable? Should you do it? Is that going to create any consequences for your OPT, immigration and all of that? That's what we're going to cover in this video. Let's go. So I got similar question from my newsletter community member and I decided to make a video. So if you haven't joined newsletter community, please join link in the description. But here's the short answer. Answer is yes, absolutely. You should do it. Uh, watch the end to make sure you understand the immigration consequences. But the short answer is yes. If you want to skip this whole video, feel free to skip it. Here's the long answer. Obviously, this is a great opportunity. If you do end up getting an internship, which they want to convert into full time, keep going it for a year. Should you do it? Yeah, absolutely. You should absolutely do it. And here are three reasons why you should do it. Number one, lots of money, <laughs> especially if you work for like Goldman Sachs or Bloomberg. And if that gets converted into like full time, that happens, then you most likely will be able to pay off your entire master's. And depends on which university you're going to, but you'll make a lot of money. So that's number one. Number two is is lots of amazing real world experience. If it is one year long internship experience, you will have so much to share in your resume. You'll work on several projects. Your resume will be filled up and that's a great way to tell stories in your future interviews and your future full-time job search. And finally, if they are able to convert your summer internship into fall internship, into spring co-op, something like that, that means they really like you. They want to keep you in their company and they value your skills. So, so that is most likely a sign that they're going to convert you into full time. And because you have been long so long, fourth benefit, which is an add on benefit that because you have already proved it, they might be even able to apply for your H1B while you finish your master. So it's your zeroth attempt of H1B. You might get it, you might not get it, but another benefit of having such long internship. So there's not really a single reason why you shouldn't do it, but there are some immigration things which you want to be very cautious about. I'm going to cover it in a minute, but let's first talk about how is this even possible? Is this like, do people get like one year internship? All right, let's talk about how this is possible. Start with number one, which is day one CPT. Yes, absolutely. So there are some master's program, which and some universities, which basically avoids the one year rule. So typically, if you want to be eligible for internship, you have to have nine months or two full semesters on campus. And then only you can do full time CPT. Again, there are some rules and you have to work with DSO, but that's generally how it works. But there are some universities, some programs which will avoid that rule because your program demands that you can have on day one, you can actually do full-time CPT. You have all the skills, you might be able to get a full-time job slash internship and then continue that forever as long as you want. The second possibility of this question might be that, all right, you got summer internship. Most likely that summer internship, they really liked you and they want to convert it. They want to extend that internship. So that will convert into fall internship. In your master's program, you have to maintain certain credits to be a full-time student, F1 full visa student. It's required by university. You have to have certain credits. Typically it's eight to nine credits, which you have to take every single semester. But let's say a uh, summer internship, you are allowed to not take that, right? So summer internship is like where you can do full time. No problem. Fall. Now, if you want to maintain your F1 visa status, you're going to do CPD. Now, if you understand the word CPD, it's curricular practical training, which means it is curricular, which is, and it's a practical real world job, which you are doing. And it's a training. That's a job. It's helping you with your curricular, which is helping you with your degree. So that's why you basically can tell your program director that, Hey, I want to use one credit for doing my full-time internship. Now there are some universities who will let you do this. There are some universities who will say like, Nope. You cannot do it. There are some universities will let you do it for one semester out of your four semesters. One semester, you can have less than eight credit and that could be your fall continuation. But then your next semester, you if they want to continue, you cannot do that. You have to do what is called co-op, which means you have you can do if it's a remote. You can continue doing the full-time internship, but you also have to take your classes to maintain your full-time students. All of this, you have to, have to, have to work with two people. Your DSO, they are the one who's going to maintain all your service record and your F1 visa, and they will issue your new I-20 and all of that. And your program director, they have to approve that, yes, your internship will align with what I want to do. Again, only do it if your university and DSO allows you, the, which is summer converting into full-time fall and all of that. Now, there are fall core which again is 
probably one semester you can do that now there's third option which is like part time cpt which can be one year long because you know that person hasn't mentioned if it is a full time or a part time so there could be like a part time internship which you can continue and you can do it for unlimited time after your one year of masters is done so you can do summer internship fall internship spring internship all of those are considered one one cpt credit course which again you have to get it approved and you can continue doing it until you graduate it has to be like part time and the reason it has to be part time is because there is an immigration consequences if you extend one year let me talk about some of the immigration consequences here is the big thing you have to remember you do part time cpd which is part time internship which is 20 hours or less than 20 hours you can do it unlimited after your first year of your masters degree uh, again you have to still get it approved but if you do full time cpd like day one cpd and then you extend more than 365 days on uscis website on ice website if you extend 365 five days then you are not eligible for opt and stem extension never want to extend your full time cpd more than 365 days if you do that then you lose your opt so make sure that if you get the opportunity you stop it before 12 months so that's like a big consequences if you want to actually utilize your opt but if you're someone who just came for masters and want to use this opportunity go back or do something on your own yeah maybe you don't care about opt so you can continue your long full time internship for entire masters thing and then there is opt which is again once you are completed done with your masters you want to apply for opt and then that's when you can do your full time job once your opt is approved and you get your authorization and all of that so just making sure you understand and the difference between cpd and opt i'll make a separate video on opt because there is so much people don't understand when to apply how to apply how to get it approved and all of that so i'll make a separate video stay tuned for that subscribe if you haven't already but cpd you can absolutely do it internship get it go for it just make sure you navigate these situations with your dso and your universities i would highly recommend you just do like one semester like a full one semester and a summer internship that's more than enough uh, to get like some real good experience and then you can always do uh, Uh, part time internship that's what i did so what i did with my masters is i did summer internship then that internship got converted into part time internship or my fall semester so instead of doing 20 hours on campus i would just do my internship because company i was working for was in the same town as my university so i would just go and work there and then do i was a full time student nine credits 20 hours on internship so that's part time cpd if you do part time cpd you can keep doing it more than 12 months no limit to it as long as your both dso and program director approach then that got also extended in my spring semester so technically i had fall semester spring semester and summer so that's what i was able to do it it's totally possible you just have to work with your dso so there you have it if you have any further question on this topic please let me know in the comment section if you enjoyed this video you want to watch this video which is how to get internship because we are talking about internship you want to understand how to get it so here's the road map and also how to get interview calls because without interview calls you are not going to be able to do it so watch these two videos and i'll see you guys in the next one and then keep smiling keep us think or hustle every single day